Hey, welcome to Oil Life. We are excited to have you back again this month, especially after we had our crazy kind of failure last month. And so we're going to address that in a little while and talk to you a little bit about the um, mayonnaise that didn't work because I figured out why it didn't. So I'm Melanie. This is my husband, Matthew, and we're excited, like I said, again to be with you um, this evening. So our theme for tonight is spring and April showers. And so the first thing that we're going to start with is a wonderful lemon bread. And I'll just show you. We brought this one in almost whole, and it's that much of it has been eaten already. And so we just wanted to show you um, what it looks like, the finished product. So the first thing I want to give you a tip about is preparing your pans. So you'll notice that with this, I have parchment paper. And so this is why I do this, is because voila, look, you can just pull it out, how easy that is. So what I usually do is take my pan like this, put just a little bit of cooking spray in it, and then I cut my parchment paper. And if you were to look at this parchment paper, it's not even exact for the size of the pan, but it just creates a cradle for the pan. And so I use that cooking spray that's in there to kind of anchor it and hold it down. And then I just pull the edges down so that it will stay. And then the great thing is, is when you take it out of the oven, all you have to do is slide your knife on these two ends and pull it up and you get this perfect pan of bread. And so that's the first tip that I want to show you about the, the um, prep for that. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is jump in and start making our um, bread. So the first thing that we have done here is in a bowl, I've gone ahead and put my flour. And this is two cups of flour. But I did want to show you the correct way to measure flour. And you guys will probably say, oh, I've been measuring flour forever. There's not a correct way. But when you're baking things, you want to use the scoop method, okay? And what I usually do is just loosen up the flour in my bag a little bit too so that it's got some air in it and then drop it into my cup. So the same thing here again, because the majority of your recipes are made with this scooping method like this. And so if you've had things that haven't turned out real great, it could be because your flour is too heavy and you're getting way too much flour in there. So that's the way you wanna always measure flour when you are doing baking type projects, okay? All right, I've got the flour in there. Next is my four teaspoons of baking powder. And probably most of you know that you want to use baking powder that is the non-aluminum baking powder. Um, for years, our baking powder had aluminum in it, and it's not good for us. So lots of them now actually say right on the label, no aluminum in them. Okay, in my larger bowl, I've got my sugar in here, and I started it out with putting zest in. If you don't have a great zester, you'll want to in, um, invest in one. I like the Microplane brand. Um, they are sharp, 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 so be really careful with them. So what you're gonna do when you zest is you're just simply taking off this top part of your lemon. And so it's all the yummy, yummy parts of the lemon. I think we talked a little bit about this last month. This is basically what's happening when we get our wonderful oils too. They are actually using just this top part and that's what's being distilled to make the wonderful lemon oil. So this is actually three tablespoons and the recipes will be posted, so don't sweat it about um, ingredients. But what I'm doing here is, if you can see that, is I'm getting this wonderful uh, lemon zest in the sugar so that that's going to scent that sugar and make it so flavorful. Everybody that has tasted the bread has loved it because it is so lemony, so rich. And this is how you're getting that great lemony flavor. So you're going to do that. Matthew, why don't you come and drop in for me the four drops of lemon oil and I'm going to talk to you guys about this. This is a Danish whisk. This is just a really cool little implement that is awesome for when you're making quick breads and muffins because if you've ever had muffins or quick breads that have been tough it's probably because you have over mixed them. And so with this Dutch whisk, you're going to see, I call it Dutch, sorry, Danish whisk. You're going to see how fast it incorporates things and how much easier things can go in. Okay, so Matthew's going to put four eggs in for me into that sugar um, bowl. And then I've got applesauce here, a half a cup of applesauce. And I'm going to top it with another half a cup of oil. 
and I like in my baking goods, I use olive oil all the time for all kinds of cooking. But in baking things, I find that that olive taste can be a little intense and a little bitter. So I really like sunflower oil for baking products. Okay, so we've got that in, and I'm gonna actually let Matthew whisk this around for me while I measure the yogurt that's gotta go in next. Love these measuring cups. You can see how cool they are. See, they've got the measurements going up the sides, and so you can actually see what you're doing. So this is just plain yogurt. And I should have gotten out a spoon, but I didn't. I forgot about that. So I'm just going to dump this in. And so what we're doing now is getting a cup and a half of yogurt. This is just plain vanilla yogurt. How you doing? It's looking good. Okay, so here we go. Here goes our, our uh, yogurt into it. You can see that this is a fairly easy and fun recipe, so this would be a great recipe to make with kids because it's so easy. Okay, so while Matthew's got that going there, I forgot to grab a fork. Since this is already wet, I'm not going to throw it in my dry ingredients, but I'm just going to whisk my dry ingredients. I should have done it first with that Danish whisk, and then it wouldn't have been a problem. But I'm just doing this because that way, ooh, and I'm seeing the salt out here, and I forgot that. Good thing the salt was sitting here. And the salt is just a teaspoon. Love the Redmond sea salt because it has all the good minerals in it. So what I'm doing is just incorporating the baking powder and the salt in that flour. And so then what I'm going to do is just pour it in. And this is the part where you want to be careful, where most of us make the mistake of overmixing. You don't want to overmix this. You want to just get it incorporated is all. In fact, you might call it folding. You're folding the ingredients together. So I'm trying to do it quick here and not overmix it too much. You'll find these whisks on Amazon King Arthur Flour, and they'll, you'll find that they have two sizes of them. This is actually the smaller size. I like it for my um, sweet breads like this and muffins. And then for, I've got one that's even bigger, and it would be great for if we didn't have electricity and we had to make bread by hand because it's a nice big one. Okay, so as you can see, this has actually still got just a few little lumps and bumps in it, and that's perfect. I'm fine with a few little lumps and bumps, okay? Now, when you guys go to make this, you're going to say, oh, she forgot the vanilla. Just know I put the vanilla in the applesauce, and so that's where it, it went in, okay? So what I'm going to do is go ahead and put this in muffins tonight instead of a loaf, because the loaf takes 45 to 50 minutes to bake. I have to tell you, I was kind of surprised that it was a little bit on the flat side. So what I might do next time is it made two pans this size. I might put in just a little bit less dough. I was trying to be economical and just get it in the two pans. But next time what I might do is do just a little bit less and I think you might get a little bit more rise out of it if you did that so that it wouldn't be quite this flat. So what I'm going to do then is go ahead and put this into muffin tins, like I said, and we'll bake it that way. Okay, Matthew is going to start now and show you an amazing fruit salsa, and I will let him take it away. Okay, um, this is a blueberry pineapple salsa. And the first thing, of course, you want is a fresh pineapple and... If you, when you get it home from the store, put it up on its end like this, and it'll actually, the sweetness will actually go down into it more, the sugar. Uh, now, I like to slice manually the pineapple. I found that those other, those uh, ones that you screw down in, they leave a lot of the pineapple on the sides that you can't use and whatever else, and so it just works better that, that way. So I slice off the top. Slice off the bottom. And then what I like to do, I like to basically cut it in half, cut it in quarter, and then I'll take off the peel.
cut out the core. And then I'll usually slice it in two, two, uh, two or three with it. Knowing I'm going to want small, I'm going to want to cut it a little smaller to get the smaller for the salsa. Just a roll in with the chopping with your knife. Let the knife do the work rather than you. Works the best that I've found. Just roll down. And I bet that's probably pretty close to two cups. tell you guys this is really exciting that Matthew's saying it's about two cups because for those of you that watched us before you know that I'm the pourer and dumper and he's the measurer which is so funny because it's usually just the opposite so I think you're making great strides because you're going this looks like two cups that's awesome undo a little bit more <laughs> The next um, the next thing will be the a cup of blueberries and we bought just a cup worth so that works out really good. So I don't have to do a whole lot on that. So here's the blueberries. Brought them, washed them, so I'm just going to put them in. Then a pepper. On a pepper, I usually like to cut off the top and then get out the. We don't have a garbage bowl, do we? Garbage full. Yes, I do. Over there by the sun. Okay. Once a full red pepper. So I'm going to show you guys what I've been doing in the background. I have a scoop that's this size, which, oh shoot, let me tell you. I can, maybe, it's got the number on it. It's a 20. So I don't know if you guys knew that, but on scoops, if you look at right here on this, it tells you what size it is. So this is a 20, and so that makes perfect um, cupcakes or muffins. And so I just scooped it out. And so just so you know, some of them were probably just a skosh full. I probably could have really gotten two and a half dozen from this if I would have been a little bit more careful. Um, but I've got two dozen and four or something like that. So these are going to get popped in the oven now. So I just cut it in strips and then chop it through. And that goes in the bowl. Um, the jalapeno is the next one. Were you going to show that, Melanie? Yeah. I'm just trying to find my timer here real quick on my phone so I can put a timer on those muffins. So the, they take 20 to 22 minutes to bake, and so I'm actually going to set it for 19 and check them at 19. Okay, so this is the way I like to do a jalapeno. Matthew may differ from me, but... I cut off the top and get rid of it, okay? One thing I've really learned to be careful with jalapenos is don't touch your face. <laughs> don't touch anything around your face because you will end up getting hot and burny and it's not a pleasant experience. So what I usually do is cut them in half like this and then take my nice sharp knife and cut down the side, down the side, 
across the bottom and then I just carefully pry it out. Now I have to tell you guys, I used to throw this down the garbage disposal and then I started discovering that after you throw it down the garbage disposal and you just turn the disposal on, those seeds come up and bite you in the air. And so you really want to just get rid of them and throw them out. If you like jalapeno, then you put seeds in to make it hotter. But if you don't like it as hot, then you don't want to put the seeds in. So these are such big jalapenos that we're actually going to just use one and then we'll kind of test it for the heat and see what we think. So with jalapenos, I always go, there's a sneaky seed. I always just try and go really, really thin with them so that that way I can get a really good dice on them. And where's our sharp, our other knife, the other, oh, right here. Yeah, this, this knife, I have to tell you guys, I absolutely love. It's a vegetable knife. It's not so great on things like this that have a thicker membrane. You really want the whole knife to be able to cut through, and with those holes, it just doesn't quite do that. But I do love it for everything else, veggie-wise. So, and I think we've talked to you before about the knives that we love. We love Wustoffs, and you want to invest in good knives in your kitchen because there's nothing more frustrating than having yucky knives. It just makes cooking not fun. So here we go. We're getting a tiny little dice on these guys. Matthew, is everything in our bowl then? No. Okay. Okay, so I'll do the garlic while you're demoing the onion. So I even go back and just try and dice through again on those jalapenos. Sorry, you guys, my hair probably looks like a wreck because we were out in the wind today. The wind is terrible here in, in Utah today. <laughs> so I'm like going, I feel hair all over. So, so for the onion, I cut it in half. Then I'm cut off not the part with the tail on it. The root. The That's root, called the yeah. root. And then I'll pull this back. Sometimes you can hang on to it. And then since I want it sliced, I'm going to actually... I want chopped. I'm going to actually go with the grain or the other of the onion. Where did you put all oh, there's the garbage bowl? See, he's he knows that knife is sharper, so he just stole it from me. If we showed you guys this last time, I think, but for those of you that didn't see it, this is a great little garlic peeler. You just stick your garlic in it and then roll it. And voila, see it pulls them apart. Isn't that fun? So that's a lot more onion than, that's about two, isn't it? What did it call for? Two tablespoons. Two tablespoons, yeah, that looks good. Oh, look how pretty this is, you guys. Are you seeing it already? It's gorgeous. This is why it'd be so much fun for a shower is because, you know, you kind of want some bright, colorful foods. And so that's kind of a fun thing to have this pretty, pretty salsa. Don't have them. The, which? The, Another one like this. I didn't bring two, sorry. There's tablespoons and teaspoons if you want that. I can dump that though, here. And let me show you guys the glaze real quick because then Matthew can use this. So love these little tiny measuring cups like this, the quarter cuppers. So this is actually four tablespoons of sugar. This is the glaze for the bread. So I'm gonna dump that in, and then that way Matthew can have that. And I'm also going to do um, about a half a cup of um, lemons. So I'm actually gonna start putting those in. And for those of you that don't have a press like this, love these presses. Holes are in the bottom, so you put the lemon in like this. And then, oh, I was gonna use Matthew's cup, but he's gonna need it. And then you just simply squeeze. And here's a little trick too. Usually there's a little bit of juice hanging around, so I usually tip it sideways to make sure I got it all out. But the other thing too is two things that we want to teach you about. One, on citrus, if you will find, if you go through the citrus and are looking through it, if you'll go through and try and find the smoothest citrus you can find, that has a lot more juice in it, okay? And then the other thing you want to do is take your lemon or your lime and just push on it really hard on the counter and roll it back and forth a few times because that also helps release those juices. 
Sorry, I stole the juicer from you. You needed it, right? Okay, are you ready for it back again, or are you doing garlic? Okay, so I'll move this out of the way so you guys can see. He's dicing up that garlic really small. And I'll keep working on the lemons since I can use the juicer while he's not using it. So when you get this, your natural inclination is to put it in like this because this is the way it looks, you know. But see, the holes are in the bottom. So you want to put it upside down because you're wanting your juice to go through. And I have to tell you, after using lots of lemons over the years and limes, if you get the pretty colored ones, you're really tempted to get those in the grocery store or in the uh, variety store or whatever. They're cute, but guess what? That enamel comes off really fast, especially with citrus. And so it's worth it to invest in a stainless steel one. Yeah, it's about three times the amount of the other one, but you'll buy three of the chintzy cheap ones in the time that you could have just had this really good metal one. Okay, do you need this? Because I can stop. Okay. There you go. Where's your what thing? My little tablespoon. Your tablespoon. Oh, just guess. Huh? Just guess. Don't measure. You'll be fine. Well, what I was thinking, <laughs> if we put the oils in with the lime juice. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, let me do this. Here it is. Well, look. We'll do it in a small bowl like this, and then that way... Okay, so what Matthew was explaining to me is that he wants to mix the liquid all together because that way he can add the essential oils in to the liquid. It'll distribute a lot better. So way smart, dear. Good job. Okay. She done? Of tea, would you do? Yeah, I would. So Where's he's gonna quarter teaspoon. Yeah, it's right there. Nope, that's a half, so guess. I don't have a don't have a quarter, sorry. So here again, I'm still working on the glaze for this bread. Okay, I'm putting two drops of lemon oil, or lime oil in it. I bet you're going to need a spoon to stir that, aren't you? Yep. I'll just... I can do one. And then, ginger and cumin are hot. Very hot. So you, what we found to do is you take a toothpick, and you actually put it in your your uh, oil. Put it in your oil. In the orifice, they call it. And then you just put it in. Swish it. Give it a good swish. Give it a good swish, and that's what you, that gives you a little bit of cumin if you want less than a drop. Cilantro is another real hot one. Okay, so I'm back to my sugar, and here's my lemon juice going in. So all that that's all there is in this glaze, okay? And then I'm going to set it on the cooktop and let it come to a boil. Okay, so I'm just going to stir it, mix it together. Mix it all over the place, I guess. Mm -hmm. What do we want to do this? What? You want to try it or what? Yeah, we for sure need to try it because we got to see if we've got enough flavor in it. Okay, I know that there are some throwaway spoons here somewhere. Here's a chip. Oh, okay, that's a good idea because then we can try it with the salt. So first of all though, let's show you guys how beautiful it is. Isn't that fun? So you can actually serve this along with a regular salsa too for those people that aren't fruit people. But this just speaks spring to me. So I'm excited to try it. Oop, I want a blueberry too. I'm gonna go back in. Don't let your guests do that, right? Mmm. Mmm. What do you think? It's yummy. It could have more lime oil. So let's put a little more drop of essential oil. I'll finish the lime. Oh, okay. And then I put another drop of um, 
doTERRA essential vitamin too. There's just a little bit of heat that's hitting the back of my throat as it goes down. So it's perfect. Isn't that awesome? It's so gorgeous. I love it. Okay, let's give it another try. So we didn't put any salt in it because of this chips that have salt. So just make sure your chips are salty. If they aren't, because I almost grabbed the unsalted bag the other day. That way you'd want to salt this a little bit too. Mmm. Let it sat for a couple hours. Mm. Yeah. So fun, you guys. So yeah, I would let this sit a little bit. So that if you made it like, say, four hours ahead. Sorry to talk with my thoughts. Oh. If you made it about four hours ahead, then all those flavors are going to marry together and it'll be so much better. So love, love, love it. Yum. So good. Okay. Now we're going to finish off with a drink for the shower, okay? But I'm going to go check my muffins real quick first, okay? So I'm going to let Matthew start on this real quick. It's going to take him a minute because, no, he's got to do a cup of fresh lime juice. So it's going to take him a few minutes to get all those limes in. And I have to tell you, I'm going to start right off on zest one, okay? Because I don't know about you guys, but I love, I've got lemons still stuck in there. That's not good. I love to have some zest in things too. So I'm going to put just a little bit of lime zest in there. Um, right here, do you want to rinse it out? Oh, I hear my, my glaze boiling. Yep. Okay, so I can take that off the heat. It's all the way done. So you basically, you're just making that glaze boil because that way it's getting all that sugar to dissolve so that you have a nice glaze instead of clumpy glaze. Okay. All right. So I put a couple of those in and then he'll start juicing. Okay, I'm going to run and check the muffins real quick. So I'll just roll it. Use the juicer. Back for a hot pad, dear. Sorry. Sometimes you've seen those reamers. I don't think it gets as much juice out as these the ones you just squeeze. A lot harder to work with. On the salsa, you might want to cook to cut the pineapple a little smaller. It was a little bigger. Just so it fit on the chip better? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, we're going to introduce something else fun to you guys tonight, and that's agave. And probably a lot of you have used it before, but I love, love, love it with fruit. In fact, you know what? We're going to put just a drip of agave in that dip. Because the thing that's so fun about agave is it heightens the flavor in fruit. And so I'm just going to put a little drizzle across it, and we'll stir it in. And that's going to make it even yummier. I have lots of limes for you. Where? There's more in another bag. Okay. I think. Okay, so there we go. Okay, so what we're going to do is, for this beverage, instead of having to use sugar and try and get sugar to dissolve, we're going to use agave instead. And the other thing that's great about the agave is you can use less than if you were having to use the sugar. So I need to check real quick so I can do my guesstimating here. Okay, so about an eighth of a cup to a quarter cup of agave. I'm just going to kind of fill the bottom of that pitcher with agave. Okay, Matthew is trying to get a whole cup of lime juice. Those limes were kind of small. But I know, I'm pretty sure, did you get the ones that were in that green colored bag too? I'm going to peek back here and see. Okay, it just... 
does look happen. like that is all the lines we're, we've got, so darn it, it won't be as limey as we wanted to. But the great thing is you've got your essential oil, your doTERRA essential oil. So even if you don't have as many lines as you need, you're building your flavor by the lime anyway. So it's no sweat. We've got it. We're good. So, okay, so he's going to go ahead. And... No, you don't. No. Whoops, you got a line in there. Okay. All right, great. Sometimes, too, you just never know how much you're going to get out of your lines, right? So there we go. Okay, we need to find a big, tall spoon. Let me... You guys will laugh. I said a big tall spoon, literally a big tall spoon. <laughs> so we're just going to get that going together. Okay. This calls for fresh mint leaves. So that's going to give it a really fun pop for spring. So we've got our fresh lime plant. You always want to try and grab those if you can find them. How many of you guys have planted lime in your pop in your garden and it like overtakes the garden and you're like ah, I didn't want that much mint <laughs> so here's a great tip put it in a pot oh Matthew's remembering he forgot the cilantro that's what else that dip needs so he's gonna throw that in so I'm gonna use 14 to 16 fresh mint leaves here Ooh, it smells so good you guys this is spring too. another spring smell you, and probably a lot of you guys wonder, you know, lots of times you go into a really fancy restaurant, there's lime on, or I mean mint on the plate, and you may think that's just pretty, but I think most of you know from your essential oils, this is great for digestion. So I'm going to actually eat one because it's so good for our tummies. Okay, so there's my mint leaves. Some of you guys may have spearmint. Um, doTERRA essential oil spearmint. If you do, great. Add just a tiny bit in. This is another one that you kind of need to be careful because it's pretty potent. So I'm just going to start with one and then if we decide we need more, we'll add more. Okay, that's looking gorgeous down there. I'm going to add in a few more of these small leaves. And then I'm going to run and grab the chilled ginger ale. So we went easy measure tonight. We went with the cans. And so if you want to help me, we're going to put in four of them. They are more than a cup a piece, but I think we'll be good. See, this is the measuring coming out in him, and I'm like, oh, nah, we'll be all right. Ooh, that's smelling so fun. Tell you what, I'll compromise with you. I'll taste it. How about that? And then we'll decide oh, if we can have more ginger ale or not. This this tall spoon just cracks me up, you guys. That is a great spoon. Everybody probably needs one of those in their kitchen, right? <laughs> okay, look at my fancy cup that I'm doing this with here. That's the muffins. Would you mind checking them and see how they look? I should have brought some fancier cups from home. Okay. Oh, wow, you guys. Yum, yum, yum. So this is wonderful with the lime, the mint, and it really could stand another Gatorade. It's not going to be a problem. Or, not Gatorade. <laughs> Ginger ale. So I'm going to go ahead and throw one more in. And so if you were making this for a party, you might... I think it's pretty having the mint um, in it, but if you didn't want that and you didn't want it getting in cups, you could definitely put it in a beverage jar like you'll see. Oh, there's a beverage jar over here. You guys may not be able to see it, but you can just put it in a beverage jar and that would be so pretty that way. And then that way you wouldn't end up getting the, the leaves that would come out in it. So if you wanted to make it really fancy, you could take some clear cups and dip the um, edges of them in sugar, and then put this in, and then put a, put a wedge of lime on the side of it, and that would look great too. So, okay, talk to us about time, those of you that are that are in charge. Would you like us to talk about mayo, or should we wrap it up? Okay, 
So the big thing with the mayo is I just want to tell you guys with the immersion blender last time what I did wrong is I just started the immersion blender and you need to pulse it, okay, because that emulsifies that egg and then makes your mayo work. And so that was my fault last time of what I did wrong. So thanks so much for joining us. We'd love to have you with us and we'll look forward to cooking with you again in the near future. Have a great spring and we'll see you next time. Thank you.